is to preserve the rich heritage of Lincoln High School and to show the connection between Lincoln Academy and Lincoln High School. The legacy continued. My name is Spurgeon Weber, Jr. I attended Lincoln Academy from 1938 to 1951, going from the first through the twelfth grade. Uh, during the time that I attended Lincoln Academy, it was a semi-private school with community students, as I was, and we had dormitory students or boarding students coming from various states throughout, throughout the East, East Coast. And they also came from major cities. And this diversity of students in classes, along with great teachers, in my opinion, allowed for a competitive and positive learning experience. And at the same time, creating a bond between individuals from various places at an early age, typical or similar to that of a college atmosphere. My family uh, lived very close to the campus and I was able to participate in virtually all the campus activities. Uh, Vespa services, I was able to participate in the dance dances, the social activities like uh, the, the old movies that were shown on the campus, pep rallies, and occasionally uh, join in with picnics on Crowds Mountain. And sometimes they had educational programs after school hours that I was able to attend. As a community student, I, I saw Lincoln Academy as a place uh, for uh, educating education, Center for Education, uh, where, where not only the uh, students who would go from the first to 12th grade, but also the adults in the community were, were trained through extension programs by the school. Uh, Lincoln Academy, in my opinion, was a religious center because most of the families that lived near the school uh, belonged to the First Congregational Church of Lincoln Academy. And of course, the church played a very important role during, during my time and still does. But during, during the years I was there, they had programs for the youth uh, vacation Bible school, they had uh, uh, Boy Scout troops and Girl Scout troops. And I remember Yvonne McNair and Thomas Wilman uh, and, and, and myself and my cousin Earl Weber all became Eagle Scouts because of the Boy Scout troop at Lincoln Academy First Congregational Church. Uh, Lincoln Academy also was a center of, of uh, recreation because it left its facilities open to, for everyone. Uh, they had the tennis courts, uh, they, they had the basketball courts, the athletic field, and we even had a swimming pool where people would come from near and far to enjoy. So basically, uh, Lincoln Academy, whether you were a boarding student or community student, I think the experiences were basically the same in attaining a great education and at the same time uh, learning high moral values. And anyone who finished Lincoln Academy, I'm sure, has a great appreciation and love for what the school did for them. When Lincoln Academy closed its doors for the last semester of the 1954-55 scholastic year, students began attending Lincoln High School. I have with me Marvin Brown, president of the class 1958. Marvin, tell us something about the boycott. Well, uh, what kind of uh, standard kids not coming to Lincoln Academy, Lincoln High, was simply not a boycott at all. It was a, a project in which the NACP had directed our bus to go to the white school. And that had to do with uh, uh, the Board of Brown versus Board of Education in Topeka, Kansas. The court had ruled uh, in the spring of 19. 54, that there would be no more segregated schools. And so our bus went to Stanley High and we were met at the railroad track by the uh, chief of police and two of his deputies to turn our bus back and send it to where it's supposed to go. So we got off the bus at Stanley Elementary School and refused to go to school for six weeks. Upon going to school in, at the end of the six week period, we had been promised a brand new bus and a brand new school. 
Uh, so we went, got on the bus and went up to Lincoln High and we met a fellow by the name of Mr. E.D. Wilson, principal of the high school there. Uh, first thing he done, he got, opened our doors up and got up on the bus. He, first thing he done, I remember him pushing his glasses up in the middle. That was one of his trademarks. He said, now listen, youngsters, let me tell you one thing. I run this school. You don't have anything to do but come here and we're going to put y'all in there without any penalties. And uh, while at Lincoln High, we learned a whole lot of, uh, of academic. Lincoln High was probably the most equipped school in the county. Better than 55% of our faculty members had their master's degrees. So the old myth of uh, school, black schools were inferior, yeah, that's all it was, a myth. Uh, schools were not fully integrated in our area until 1971 in Swan versus Mecklenburg County. Uh, and that's when the schools actually got uh, uh, integrated. So we came to Lincoln High and graduated, and, and, and we enjoyed our stay there. We learned a whole lot of stuff at Lincoln High, not only academics, but how to prepare ourselves for life. And that uh, is where we were. Marvin, tell us some of the teachers that influenced your life. Mr. Wilson, uh, the principal of school, uh, Mr. Drum, the agriculture uh, instructor, Mr. Brown, the physics teacher, and of course, Mrs. Blue, the math teacher. Uh, as I said earlier, Lincoln High was noted for its academics, not necessarily sports. Uh, and we were carried something away from Lincoln High that lasted right up to this day. I teach my grandchildren some of the same principles that I learned at Lincoln my name is Lewis Brooks. I was in the graduating class of 1959 from Lincoln High School. I, along with hundreds of other stu students, were bused from various parts of Dallas, North Carolina, High Shoals, Ranlow, Stanley, and as far away as Lowell, North Carolina, in order to maintain segregation. Many of the students were picked up early in the morning it was dark when they were picked up. It was dark when they arrived home in the evening. Our bus drivers, again, were 16 years of old of age. And again, through dangerous weather, whether it was rain, shine, sleet, or snow, they were struggling to get us to school. I must say that on many occasions, we were broken down on the highway between Dallas and Bessemer City due to the type of buses that we were First of all, had to board. They were often break down. Uh, there were many times we had accidents and what have you. That was the day before cell phone when again you had no way of getting in touch with Mr. Miller or Prof. Wilson until perhaps a motorist came along and got word to the schools that we needed help. For many of the students that were students that were bused in from these various locations, it was not possible for them to take Part in the many after school activities such as basketball or football. They all, Lincoln High also had a baseball team. For me, Lincoln High stands for so many things in the sense that when I look at the number and the types of students, careers that came out of Lincoln High School, for the such of uh, Lieutenant Carlisle Brown that was missing in the Vietnam War. Uh, we have doctors, teachers, educators, principals, uh, the whole realm of uh, people that are professions, barbers and business leaders. I am so proud to have been a part of that period. When I think back as to how, why Lincoln High School was established, mainly to keep us out of white schools and to see the results that have come as a, as, as a result of that. I am so proud to have been a Lincoln High School student. Okay, um, I'm Shirley Carter Williams, 1953 graduate of Lincoln Academy High School. Beautiful campus, resembling a small college. Great teachers, wonderful principal, Mr. E. D. Wilson, where they insisted that we follow rules, learn, and have fun at the same time. I did not attend Lincoln High School, 
but I was Mr. Wilson's secretary, Mr. E.B. Wilson's secretary for several years at Lincoln High School where I had the awesome privilege of working with some of the teachers who had taught me at Lincoln Academy and that was a great experience. I have memories from the school year 1949-1950 on that are etched on my heart and in my mind that will be with me for the rest of my life of a time when I was well disciplined, excellently taught, had lots and lots of fun, and gained many, many friends from far and near. Upon leaving Lincoln Academy, the school's student body brought with them the same teachers, mascot, tiger, which is a tiger, and continued with the same school song. However, in response to the new location, one change was made in the wording of the school song, starting at the foot of Whitstone Mountain instead of at the foot of Crowder's Mountain. School serves students from Bessemer City, Gastonia, Dallas, Stanley, and High Shoals. Boarding students who were already enrolled at Lincoln Academy High School in 1955 were bused to Lincoln High School to finish out that year. My name is Barbara McLean. I am a product of Lincoln Academy and Lincoln High. I grew up in the community as a day student, and I can't say how much that meant to my formative years. We had great teachers, great community, and everybody belonged to everybody else. And that is the wonderful thing about a full education. I was a member of the first class to graduate from Lincoln High School. We moved to Lincoln High in March of 1955, and I graduated from Lincoln High. However, my diploma is from Lincoln Academy. My name is Tweedy Worthy Stewart. I graduated from Lincoln High School in 1956. Uh, the thing that impressed me more, more about Lincoln High School than anything else uh, were the teachers. The teachers were very articulate, they dressed well, they wanted you to do well, and they didn't take any junk. For example, they taught us good, better, best, never let it rest. Not in those terms, but that's what they meant. They wanted every child to excel, and when you walked into classrooms, the classrooms were conducive for learning, and they worked us hard, and we enjoyed it. My favorite teacher was Miss Bluewell. Ms. Bullwell once told me, I told her, I said, I can't do that. She said, little lady, yes, you can. There's no such word as can. Ms. Bullwell was most influential in my life. Ms. Bullwell taught us how to be little ladies, and she would always correct you and uh, direct you in the proper way to go. In fact, she taught me life skills that I still use. In fact, I use some of those things in my classroom now. Another thing I reflect on is the good times we had at Lincoln High School too. I never will forget Mr. Wilson and Ms. Wilson doing ballroom dancing. Uh, one year, I played sports with my sisters, Joy Worthy, Linda Worthy, and Tweety Worthy. We all played together. So those were some of the fun things that I did at Lincoln High School. I also remember Mr. Wilson having a leather strap in his office for us and a ball bat by his desk for the parents. Of course, he never used a, a ball bat, but Mr. Wilson and all the teachers were excellent people, and I'm grateful, and they did influence and mold me in whatever I do today. I'm Walt Johnson, uh, graduate of Lincoln High School, uh, 1957. In 1955, I left the New Haven, Connecticut school system to get a better education in the South, and my mother and father talked with me, and uh, we decided since I wasn't an active part of the school system there, we couldn't uh, participate in uh, activities after school or athletics. I decided to come south where 
we had our own school systems, we had our own schools, colleges, and universities. And my mother was quite impressed having come from the South herself. And after uh, arriving here in uh, North Carolina, my mother had uh, got in touch with the uh, Board of Education and they put her in touch with uh, Miss Dora Humphrey. She was one of the first black superintendents in the state of North Carolina. And she referred me to the principal at Lincoln Academy, and um, Mr. Wilson. And upon arrival, I lo learned that the school's dormitories had closed. And so we were uh, kept by neighboring uh, individuals at uh, a very minimal uh, rate of around $20 a month. Um, and we we got a, a very good education. In fact, uh, my education was, was so improved from what it was when I was in Connecticut. I now have a PhD in computer science, a master's in uh, probability theory from Yale University, a master's in organic chemistry from Atlanta University, and a uh, master's from Clark Atlanta in uh, computer science. And I've taught uh, on the university level for about 40 years. Right now I'm Vice President of uh, Technology at Shaw University and Chairman of the Computer Information Sciences Department there. After graduating from Lincoln High School, I felt that I was prepared for higher education and sought a scholarship at uh, North Carolina Central University. At the time it was called North Carolina College. And while there, I uh, was able to get a track scholarship and that led to the uh, All-American uh, Division I NCAA twice and a uh, Olympic qualifier on the 1960 Olympic team and the 1964 Olympic team. Uh, the 60 Olympic team was in uh, Rome and that was with uh, Cassius Clay known now as Muhammad Ali and um, quite a few uh, others such as Wilma Rudolph. In 64, uh, the Olympics was held in Tokyo. And from all of that, I can credit Lincoln High School uh, for giving me the opportunity to actually participate because I didn't know that I had that ability while in the school system in Connecticut. We weren't allowed to participate in uh, after school activities and athletics. So I'm, I'm very thankful that I was able to uh, come to a school where uh, people were genuinely concerned about your well-being. And they taught the whole student, not just uh, the segment that was in the classroom. Uh, 